Two brilliant events, a community day, and two adversary events this month. Let's get into it. I'm Professor Vokas, and this is Harry Potter Wizard Unite. Hello, Professor. I didn't see you there. To start things off this month, from February 5th to February 8th will be the first um, event, which is an adversaries event, around Gilderoy Lockhart and Slytherin's Basilisk. So that's Friday through Monday, kind of our normal thing, 11 to 11 Pacific time. Heading over to the registry, registry, and then the challenge registry, obviously. Going into the uh, feared adversaries, uh, Gilderoy's the third one down, so it shouldn't be too difficult to defeat if you've already fought him. He, uh, two Pixies guard him, so professors have an advantage against him, but the Pixies aren't too difficult in general, and Gilderoy is not that difficult in general, I don't feel, for any, for any of the professions. As you can see, I'm eight out of nine on him, so I'm looking forward to being able to certainly get one more and make get this page uh, going toward bronze because, of course, I'll finish him and then I'll still have the rest of the images to place. So I'll probably go through him again, have his image build up again before I move on to the next page. And then right below him is Slytherin's Basilisk, and you can see Slytherin's Basilisk I've actually done ten times because gone through nine times and then got one more. So again, another one that I'm looking forward to being able to get to bronze at the very least and then just start building towards silver. Really depends on that weekend what my schedule's like and how, how hard I can go at it. In, in addition, running out of energy really if I'm at home doing this. Out and about, usually I can regain that energy and continue to fight because it's not too potion intensive as opposed to like the dragons, which that tends to be limited by the number of potions I can actually have to sustain it. These guys don't take as many potions, so it's easier to keep up. I also do find it fitting that they put these two together since they're both from Chamber of Secrets and Gilderoy went down with Harry and Ron down to the, uh, the Basilisk's uh, chamber, to the Chamber of Secrets. Not obviously making it the whole way, but he was a part of this. So to put them together thematically at least is a nice touch. That event ends on a Monday, and then February 9th, the very next day, begins the first Brilliant event, and goes through February 16th, Tuesday to Tuesday, just like any normal Brilliant event. This one revolves around the Quidditch changing room, the Brilliant Quidditch changing room. And it looks like Quidditch fan Hermione and Quidditch keeper Ron are going to be the two foundables that are going to be out and about on the overworld map, in addition to it looks like um, Seeker Harry and Crookshanks as well. I don't expect that event to be any different than any Brilliant events we've had up to now, and certainly I'll have a guy coming out for it, but really nothing to do to prepare for it right now. Just know that that's the week that it happens. In addition, in the middle of that happening on February 11th is the new moon. And looking at the registry, if you don't know already, during a new moon, Death Eaters appear more often. I'm down here on out of these five, and I can go ahead and click on it, the Death Eater here. Um, those right there are going to appear during the new moon, just like the werewolves ap appear more during the full moon. So during about two days before and two days after, there's still, there's still a little deb a debate about exactly how many hours before and after the official new moon or full moon happens, but it's about two days you should start looking for those um, Death Eaters. So if you've ever wondered when, when can you finish this image, it's wait until new moons, so in this case February 11th, to get out at night and find these Death Eaters. Which brings us to the second adversaries event, which is February 16th through the 18th, which unfortunately is another midweek adversaries event, which is not as good as the weekend events, certainly. Um, and actually, it's a little bit shorter as well, because this event's going to start on February 16th at 11 a.m. Pacific time and then go to the 18th on 11 a.m. Pacific time. So for a lot of us, that means the 18th, uh, unless you play in the morning, it's kind of out that day. So you really have February 16th after 11 o'clock Pacific through just February 17th would be your main day to do it, and on the 18th, just kind of end that morning and or, depending on your part of the world, it'll end whenever that is. But it's still really, it takes it down to two days, and when you take away uh, the nighttime when you're sleeping and whatnot, it does really limit the amount of time you play. I guess I'm glad that it is Aragog, it is Aragog, by the way, um, that it's only one of these, and that the Gilderoy Lockhart and the Slytherin's Basilisk, they put that over the weekend, since there's two of them we're going after. 
gives us a little more time. But I still feel like these midweek events are not, they, I, I don't feel like most people prefer them. Most people would prefer them to be over weekends. I am here on Aragog's page. You can see I'm three out of nine, which is interesting because when the adversaries first dropped, I actually saw Aragog a couple times. So I thought I would see Aragog more often, but then I just kind of stopped seeing Aragog altogether. And Aragog is actually right below Slytherin's Basilisk. Again, not amazingly hard to defeat, although for me, at least as a professor, it does require potions. So I will end up having to use potions for this event and probably will be limited by how many potions I have. If I ran out, I wouldn't be able to fight Aragog. Thematically speaking, it's still ties in with the other adversary event, which is nice again, because Aragog also appeared in Chamber of Secrets when they went to go see Aragog, thinking that that was the monster from the Chamber of Secrets and then realizing it was the Basilisk afterwards. But again, that's a midweek event. So depending on how far you can schedule things out, if you needed to move some things around to give yourself some more time during that midweek event, um, this would be the time maybe to figure it out. But it is unfortunate that it is midweek. When we get to February 20th, that's a Saturday, that will be Community Day. It will go 24 hours and will revolve around Room of Requirement 3, which I'm on right now, which is under Mysterious Artifacts. If you haven't noticed already, the Room of Requirement pages are under Legends of Hogwarts, under Wonders of the Wizarding World, and then some are under Mysterious Artifacts. So you can see I have this page on bronze, so I'm actually very excited that they're doing a Community Day. Usually, all these should be available. Um, Mad Eyes, Moody Eyes should, but there should be ways to get all these, probably port keys and or fortresses for the fortress foundables, like um, Sirius's flying motorbike, which is one of the big ones I need. Um, the other one being the cursed necklace, the cursed opal necklace, that um, is also normally a fortress foundable. They'll probably be, one of those will probably be a port key method to getting it, and the other one will probably be a fortress method. And then the other one should just be appearing more in the wild. So if you need anything on this page, um, February 20th will be a good day for you to stock up on that and really try to advance it. Part two of the Brilliant Event will actually go into March. It's February 23rd to March 2nd, Tuesday to Tuesday at 11 to 11 Pacific time just like normal and it's going to revolve around brilliant uh, Malfoy Manor which will be the portrait of Bellatrix Lestrange and then the portrait of Voldemort brilliant versions in addition I believe the brilliant sword of Gryffindor will be involved too but again all brilliant foundables on the new registry page for that event specifically to finish out that brilliant event again I don't expect anything to be different about this brilliant event from the other brilliant events just another way to get some of the rewards a set of tasks going over you know multiple four sets and then unlocking both bonus tasks and then finishing them out to get whatever rewards are available. One other thing to look for during the event is February 27th is actually the full moon. So it'll be during this event. And again, two days before and two days after around there, be looking for werewolves. And again, that's under oddities on a different page, whereas that one's at the bottom of the oddities registry. This one's actually at the top oddities one. And you can see the werewolf there in the lower right corner of my page. Uh, the werewolf will just be appearing more often during the full moon. There's also a little debate, and I, it's still being tested, certainly, is during a full moon, if Fenrir as an adversary it comes out more often, which would be really cool thematically, since he is a werewolf, for him to be able to come out more often during that time and just appear, even though not as an adversary event, just to have him appear more often, would be really cool for them to do. But as I said, research is still pending on that. Right now, it's just anecdotal evidence of people saying, oh yeah, I saw a couple on a full moon, which really isn't proof positive. It could have just been them, as opposed to all the rest of us that maybe didn't see any. So the February schedule doesn't hold too much in the way of surprises, except for the two adversary events. Most of us were expecting one adversary event per month. And the theory, at least, at least the theory I've been going on, and, and there's been some discussion, is that the lethal adversaries, which if you look in your challenge registry and you look at that, um, the next page over from the feared adversaries, and you start to see the lethal, which starts with Barty Crouch Jr. at the top, um, we assume they're going to come out, or events for them to come out, are going to come out after each feared adversary has had a um, adversary event. Now, the fact that they put um, Gilderoy and Slytherin's Basilisk is kind of speeding that process up. And then we have two in one month with Aragog. So if we just continue to go, it should be a couple months, we should maybe see our first, first lethal adversary event. And then hopefully your combat adversary tree has been unlocked to the as much as you need to have it unlocked to maybe get to the lethals when we find out if we really do need um, the lethal adversary part. Namely, do we need to have the combat tree 
unlocked in the accuracy department or are the lethal or the lethal adversaries going to just dodge us constantly i know that's something narcissa already does to a lot of people so if the lethals are even worse does it mean we really need those nodes to even be able to land hits on them but that is a discussion for later on when lethal adversaries actually come out so that is going to do it for the february event calendar um, again, that adversary event is the first thing coming up in about four days from the time this video goes out. So the only thing I would say to get ready for that is if you do use potions, and like I said, as a professor, I use some potions for those, and Majesty Wallace Aura, you'll have to you know decide how many potions and what kind you usually use against them in good or good or bad RNG is to just maybe have those potions ready. And you've got a, the next week here to just be brewing them going into the weekend. As always, thank you guys for watching today's video, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Knox.